So let's look at the next um, topic, which is the initial login uh, for the devices. Now, first of all, let's look at the uh, VRP overview. Now, for those who have, have not learned about the uh, VRP, um, so let me just give a very quick introduction to our VRP. Uh, so VRP actually stands for Versatile Routing Platform, VRP. And what is this VRP? It is actually a network operating system. Okay, just like in the industry, we have so many different devices, different switches. They actually run a different operating system, such as in Cisco, we have uh, the uh, Cisco IOS. And maybe in Juniper, we have something called the Junos uh, as an operating system. So Huawei, we call it VRP. And this is a software platform that supports multiple types of devices, such as a router, switches, firewall, wireless LAN devices, wireless controller. They all run uh, VRP operating system and provides TCP IP routing services as always. So let's look at the int introduction to the command lines. So the CLI is divided into command views. All the commands must be executed in command views. You can run the command only after you enter its command view. So that means some of the commands has to be typed in a certain view and uh, you cannot uh, some of the commands are not cross over a different view. Uh, maybe such as, uh, for example, display. If you try to type a command display, now this command can be run in any of the view that's mentioned in this uh, in this slide. Now let's look at some of the examples. First of all, we have a view called the user view. Now how do we recognize a user view? Uh, a user view is recognized by this uh, symbol here, which is greater than and the lesser than symbol. And this is actually some of the uh, we have uh, some of the commands that needs to be run in the, in the user view. Uh, example: If you want to perform a directory listing of what are the files which is listed, uh, we have to be at the user view before we can do a DRR to look at some of the files which is located in the, our flash disk. And also, example: like If you want to save something, um, we have to also run the uh, to save the configuration. We have to also run it at the uh, user view. To change the clock, we also need to run at the user view. Now the next, uh, most likely we will spend most of the time uh, to perform the configuration is actually this view called the system view. So to change the system view, we type a simple command called system-view and to change to this view. Now again, to take note at the uh, symbol here, once you change the system view, the symbol also changes. This is actually how you can differentiate uh, where you are. It's either you are in the user view or we are in the uh, system view. Now, we also have another view, for example, like if you want to change something which is interface related commands, we need to first change to the interface. Example, interface gigabit 001. And after that, we can, after that, uh, perform IP address uh, changes, configuration. If, if this is a switch uh, port, we can actually perform some VLAN configuration uh, to change the port access type, to change the access, the trunk, etc., etc. Now, to fall back to a different, uh, to fall back to a different view, we use a command called quit, Q U I T. Okay. Um, and also, let's say for example, if you want to go to the protocol view, example OSPF, all we need to just type is to type OSPF space and the process ID, which is example number one. In, in order to add, enter into the OSPF view. And for example, if you want to switch to an RIP view, what you can do is that you can type quit from here and after that you can perform another command called RIP space 1 to enter into the RIP view. This is example example. Alright, so next let's look at some of the helps. Okay, so um, full help display all the keywords or parameters after you enter a question mark in the command line. So in any of the command line, you can enter a question mark to obtain all the commands and also the brief description of each of the commands. So this is example. Um, if you type a simple question mark over here, you can see that the system will give you some all the commands. Um, these are the starting beginning of the command line and these are the description of the command lines. Okay, And we also can do something what we call the uh, um, 
you know we can also type certain commands for example display firewall space and then follow again by the question mark and then the system will show you some of the possibility of the uh, uh, the com of the parameters that after the firewall for example you can type display firewall blacklist we can also type display firewall data plane or maybe display firewall defense example so use the question mark as often as possible to find out more commands or maybe uh, to, ha to type the command more precisely. Now we also have something called the partial help. Now partial help is sometimes where uh, it display all the keywords or parameters that start with the character strings entered in the command line. For example, uh, if you want, if you, uh, we have a command starting with D something and you've forgotten about D something, you can do D followed by a question mark and to find out that, okay, what are the commands which start with D, for example. And also this uh, method also works at the uh, parameters uh, option there. For example, you type display space B followed by question mark and to find out display B something. You can do a display bridge, we can do a display BGP, we can do a display uh, BFD, for example. Now the next very useful help is called the tab key. Now tab key is actually to help you, to help us to automatically complete a keyword okay so for example if there's only one match of the incomplete keyword for example you type info dash and then followed by the tab key and the system will actually tries to automatically complete the command for you for example like info dash center is the only command that has info dash something okay and after that if there are multiple keywords which is uh, matches for example, if you type info center space L, okay, L something, if you hit the tab after this, and the system will actually will give you a lot of possibilities because the reason is the system doesn't know which L option that you want to use. For example, we have lock host, we have local, we have lock buffer, we have, we have something called lock files. So you need to pre keep pressing the tab key uh, to perform a rotation, uh, to tap 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 up to the uh, the option that you want before you hit the, the next command okay so next we look at the uh, some of the interface uh, configuration now this is the web interface view of the network configuration uh, so to perform this first of all you need to log in to the web interface and after that we click uh, network the big icon after that we go to the interface and then we select the interface uh, to be modified for example you select uh, in this example maybe we select g gigabit ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 1 and then after that you can choose uh, which zone that you want the interface to uh, sorry which zone that the interface you want to belong to and after that you can configure the IP address uh, parameters here it can be a static IP or it can be a DHCP IP and after that you can configure the default gateway and also the DNS information in this example and just to remember you can always refer to the some of the example on the on this uh, small notes here you can configure like IP address 1.1.1.1 slash 255.255.255.0 or you can use slash 24 to represent the subnet mask right so after we configure the network we can also choose to configure the routes so in this example first first of all we click network the big icon and after that you can choose static route or maybe you can choose RIP or example example okay so from here you can also choose uh, to configure the IPv4 uh, choose the uh, uh, the virtual router by default is actually the public after that we can uh, define our uh, destination uh, destination address and also the mask and after that we can also choose what is the uh, next hop and you can fill in the next hop IP and the priority uh, in uh, in the VRP command is actually called the uh, uh, the um, uh, preference value okay so you should you want to use the command line to do the uh, uh, the changes of the static route you can actually continue with the command line with space preference with a value so 60 is basically the default for the static route uh, so if you're configuring for some other uh, some other uh, command from a different vendor maybe for example like Cisco uh, this option is actually called the uh, administrative distance value okay 
So next, um, overview of the device login management. So how do you manage a device? How do we log into the device and perform a management? So here we offer a couple of uh, choices. The first choice is actually to to connect via console cable and to perform a management. And after that, we can also use the IP way, the IPv4 method, which is using telnet, using a software like SSH, uh, using a party to SSH into the system, or we can even use the web browser to perform a web administration. So first of all, um, if we are connecting via console port, and you need to make sure that we have uh, something called the uh, USB to serial port uh, uh, adapter. Okay, USB to serial port, or maybe sometimes we call it the US USB to RS232 adapter. Uh, and after that, once we connect the adapter to our laptop or to our PC USB port, and after that, we need to go to the device manager and to check what is the uh, COM number has been assigned. Then after that, then after that, we will open up the uh, one of the free and uh, popular uh, uh, terminal software. Uh, example, uh, this software is called Putty, or we call it Putty in some other country. And uh, you can actually go to the, uh, the the configuration of the Putty, and after that, select Serial, and after that, type in the uh, COM value, which is mentioned in your device. Uh, the device view, device manager view, and after that configure uh, these parameters. Okay, uh, for the speed we use a 9600 data bit, 8 bits, uh, parity none, stop bit one, and flow control none. After that, press open, and you should be able to uh, to see a login prompt, something like ask you to key in the username and the password. Now we will talk about the username and password in the next uh, in the next slide. Right, so if we are connected via web interface login, um, so first of all, by default, you can log in to the device through only G000 interface. This is by default, okay? It doesn't mean it has to be this interface, but if you are configuring this device, the firewall, for the first time, you have to use the uh, interface G000. Right, so look for the interface, connect to the RJ for uh, connect to uh, one of the LAN cable, and configure. Okay, either you need to configure yourself with the IP address, with 192.168.0. dot something, from your laptop. Then only you connect, you you browse into this 192.168.0.1, dot one, um, or maybe you can uh, try to use the DHCP uh, dynamic host configuration protocol. Uh, that the IP probably will be given by the uh, firewall itself. Then after that, you can connect to it. Okay, and after that, the default username here is called admin, and the default password here is called admin at one two three. And after that, you'll be presented with this uh, nice interface, and you just type in the username and the password. And the same username password can also be used uh, when you access through the uh, console. Okay, you can type admin and also the admin at one two three at the console level. So once we log in to the uh, web console, the, the web interface, uh, we probably can perform some of the configuration. So for example, uh, we want to enable the web uh, management in the, uh, function uh, to enable HTTP, HTTP or HTTPS, which is secure based on the requirement and also we can change the port number all right so for example this is the uh, port number which is mentioned here 8443 which is the default port number and then you can actually change the number to something else uh, to your own uh, preference okay and also there are some of the uh, parameters where for example like uh, the uh, web service uh, timeout uh, because if within 10 minutes if there's no activity on the web browser that you're not clicking on the any interface any option here and uh, the the system will automatically uh, lock you out from the web console okay so we can also add um, additional web uh, administrator which is this is 
highly highly recommended um, so to, to do that we go to system first step and after that we go to administrator and then you press the button here called add and after that you can type in the username over here then after that we select usually we select the local authentication and after that type in the password and after that the role you can actually select maybe like administrator role or any other operator role and after that we can also check the box we need to check the box here for the web access and should you want to allow the user to access via SSH as well or maybe telnet or maybe console you need to enable uh, feature by feature for the particular user right so next to configure the interface that allow the uh, the web management and also the SSH and telnet management now remember in the from the beginning uh, I did mention that there is only one interface which is enabled for the web console which G000 GE000 should you want to configure other interface that allow the web access the web management access through telnet SSH or HTTP HTTPS we have to perform this operation here and so first of all step one is to go to the network uh, object after that we select the interface then after that we choose the interface that we want to allow which typically this interface is the one that's facing towards our local LAN and then after that we need to check the boxes here this is for the interface uh, level and of course you need to know what the IP address as well and <clears throat> So next is to el enable the telnet services. Services. So to enable the telnet services, now first of all, by default, the telnet login is disabled on the next generation firewall. To use the telnet, we need to log in to the next generation firewall, uh, and also we need to enable okay, the telnet services. Now to enable this feature, we first go to the uh, system. Then we select the uh, service setting. And after that, here we have the uh, Telnet services. Uh, we need to check the box. And of course, uh, uh, is, uh, Telnet is actually not uh, recommended nowadays because Telnet actually sends unencrypted username and the password. And also, all the commands line, all the commands that we type will be actually uh, unencrypted. And uh, it's, all, it's actually highly recommended to use SSH instead of uh, Telnet. Okay, so after that, we uh, you can actually add a new administrator, or we can actually use any of the existing administrator, and then we allow them to also have the, uh, the telnet access, as I mentioned in the previous uh, slides. And after that, uh, again, to make sure that the, the interface, uh, we have the uh, the function here, uh, the, sorry, the permission here that we allow the user to telnet into this interface otherwise um, even though this interface can be pink but it doesn't mean that the user can actually um, access the telnet via this interface now highly recommended not to enable the telnet over the WAN interface which is what we call the untrust zone interface uh, for the uh, telnet or maybe or any of the management alright so SSH login Okay, this is actually SSH will provide a greater security and powerful authentication function for users to log into device, configure SSH device management on the USG interface, and the administrator can enable SSH device management as required. Now, as I mentioned before, Telnet is actually highly not recommended, and SSH is a more preferred manner. And these are some of the basic commands how to enable SSH step by step. So first of all, we go to the next generation firewall, and if you still remember, this this uh, symbol here represents uh, system view. So make sure that uh, once you enter the, uh, the console, we need to first type uh, we need to first type uh, system view. Then only we type s telnet server enable. This is basically to enable the engine of the SSH server. After that, we go to the interface. And then we type here service dash manage enable. After that, service dash manage, uh, you can do a question mark here, and you will find uh, we can also allow web 
SSH, Telnet, Ping, etc. Or you can even put all and you follow by permit. Okay, so in this example, we just enabled SSH only for this interface. And after that, we need to generate uh, what we call the RSA key. So you can type RSA space local dash key dash pair space create. And after a couple of seconds, we manage to create the lo uh, 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 private and the public key. And after that, we go to the uh, virtual interface uh, you know, in, by using this command. User interface VTY 0404 04 basically means we want to have five sessions, we want to have five concurrent sessions beginning with session 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And after that, protocol inbound, highly recommended to use only um, SSH as the uh, protocol. If you put all here, and it will actually allow Telnet and SSH as well. And the authentication mode here we will be triple A. So which means if somebody tries to uh, telnet or maybe SSH into this uh, firewall device, and we will actually refer to triple A uh, for the authentication username and the password. So second, then to continue do the steps, we then go to triple A, AAA, and after that we type the command manager dash user space followed by a username. So in this example, the username here is called SSH admin. Then after that, we type in SSH type, sorry, service type space SSH. So we want to allow the user, the username called SSH admin, and this guy can only use SSH protocol to access the firewall. Now, if you want the user to access more than just SSH, you can, you can also space followed by web and space followed by telnet to allow the user to use multiple different protocols to access. And after that, followed by level 3, which is uh, the highest level for the user to access, and followed by the actual password. For example, password cipher Huawei. Now, now obviously, Huawei is not a highly recommended password. It is so weak, and you should actually use a combination of capital letter words, small letter words, numeric numbers, and also probably some of the symbol okay then after that this is uh, just a preparation of a triple a we still need to do uh, some configuration on the ssh user command now the command here is uh, very straightforward it's called ssh user space ssh admin so it means that we want to allow this ssh admin from the triple a to be able to use the, uh, the ssh and after that followed by the authentication type will be the uh, uh, password uh, we can also choose the uh, to use the key base uh, SSH to access. And after that, uh, SSH admin service type as Telnet. Uh, and also we have a, a, another possibility is for the, uh, the for the SCP for the file transfer. Um, so, but this is the, the minimum requirement for the S Telnet. And after that, if you want to perform the SSH testing within our own devices to our own device, from the firewall back to the firewall and we need to type this command called SSH client first time enable this is actually if you want to do it perform a test within uh, the own system yeah, after that you can uh, perform the uh, S telnet next we look at basic system settings so first of all let's look at there are three types of configuration of the device file management that we need to take into consideration now the first is actually called the uh, configuration file management, which is involved the config files, what to do with the configuration, etc., etc. The next one is called the system file management. This is actually the so-called the operating system firmware upgrade, and also the third file is actually called the license management. So let's look at the first uh, configuration file management. Now the configuration files there are two basic types of configuration. Now the first is what we call the uh, saved configuration. This is the first type. And this is the configuration file used for the next startup or maybe you can say every startup of the USG, the firewall. It is usually stored in flash memory, uh, maybe the compact flash card or maybe sometimes it could be a SD card and actually persists across every reboot. Now the next configuration is what we call the current configuration. 
Now the current configuration is the configuration currently in use in the USG. So every time when the firewall boots up, it will read from the save configuration and it will actually make a copy of the, the config into the current configuration. So current configuration is actually stored in the memory. It is modified by command lines and also the web operation. So every time we use a command line, we type something, change the IP address, it actually stays at the memory. And also the web operation is also the same. And uh, if you want the persistent uh, configuration across the reboot, uh, we first will have to perform our operation called save. And just to make sure that when you, whatever we make changes, we save and put it into the save configuration before we perform a shutdown or maybe a reboot. So the common operation of a configuration file involves save. Um, now we can actually perform a different type of uh, save. Uh, you can use command line and we go to user view and we type the command called SAV to save the configuration. Or sometimes we can also use the um, from the web interface on the upper right corner of the home page there is a button called saved and sometimes we also need to erase the configuration um, to perform what we call the factory reset so here uh, we need to know how to perform a erase of the configuration now if you are using a command line uh, there is a command called reset saved configuration uh, it's, it's a command that again you need to run at the user view but if you want to use the web method, you can actually go to the system and uh, the big icon system maintenance, configuration management, and you can press a button called restore to factory settings. Now we also have method number three, which is what we call the hardware reset button. If the device is not power on, you can press and hold the reset button at the hardware level. You can find a reset button. And then only you turn on the power on switch and then when the device indicates indicate the bling twice per second twice per second release the reset button and the device will start with the default configuration as if it's a factory reset now there's another method number four which is if the device is already started we can press and hold the reset button for more than 10 seconds and afterwards the device will restart and it will actually fall back to the default configurations. So these are a couple of methods that we can uh, uh, perform a factory reset. And sometimes we also need to know how to use the configuration, uh, the configuration file to point to the uh, the system software a different version and or maybe or maybe a different type of configuration file for the next startup because whenever we save from the current to the save configuration by default there is a default uh, configuration file which is called the vrp cfg dot C, uh, cfg or maybe dot zip we can also save from the current configuration to a different type of file name so that we can actually roll back to a different configuration as and when it's needed and also uh, the best is to perform a reboot to restart to perform a, a testing so the next is called the uh, version upgrade. Now this is the example of the version upgrade that you can perform using the uh, the web interface view. Well, first of all, we go to the system uh, icon. After that, we select uh, device uh, system sorry system upgrade, and after that, we choose the option here called the one click upgrade. And after that, it will come up with this uh, pop up screen. And this is where we can we have to choose the uh, to browse to the file, uh, with, which is usually the latest version uh, software upgrade file. And after that, uh, so the question here is that where do we get the latest software upgrade? And uh, for information, the latest software can usually be downloaded via http colon slash slash support .com slash enterprise. And from there. Uh, you should be able to find out uh, the USG model and the latest firmware. And once you selected the file, it's usually is the .bin extension. After that, you can just follow the steps and perform a one-click reboot. Uh, sorry, one-click upgrade, and most likely it will, the system will ask you to perform a reboot. So make sure you schedule uh, a downtime if you want to perform a version upgrade. 
And the next uh, third file, which is very important, is actually the license configuration. So a license is provided by a vendor, so in other words, means Huawei in this case, to authorize the usage, scope, and the validity period of the product feature. So for example, um, so let's say for example, we subscribe to the uh, antivirus, uh, so the, uh, the patents, uh, the updates, so uh, so it's actually controlled by license uh, as opposed to um, if you do not have the feature of the antivirus therefore yeah, you we should uh, if we, have, we do not have the license and therefore we cannot perform the updates of, of the viruses patents so it dynamically controls whether a certain features of the products are available or not so to perform this action very simple first of all we go to system and then we press uh, license management and after that we browse to the license files which is we obtain uh, from the uh, Huawei uh, website um, and usually you have to perform the uh, uh, if you want to, uh, to obtain the license uh, we need to connect to the Huawei portal and generate the license based on the, our ESN we call it the electronic uh, serial number and after that, press the button, activate, and uh, you should be able to browse uh, your active uh, license. Right, so we come to the end of the uh, session. So now let's look at one of the quiz questions. What is the default login IP address used in the web login mode? So the answer is very simple. It's A, which is 192.168.0.1 slash 24. If you still remember, the default port is actually gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 0. Right, so summary, uh, in this module we spoke about the functions and the models of the common network devices. We spoke about switches, routers, the firewall. Uh, we also spoke about the device login method using party, using console, and also using the web, using a browser. And also we spoke about some of the basic uh, configuration of the security device. Thank you.